In its simplest form, woodworking is a lot of cutting shapes and boring holes. To work at an acceptable level, you must cut and bore accurately. We've made many cutting videos, but very few boring videos. That changes today. Today we'll discuss the six types of drill bits a modern woodworker is likely to encounter, including discussing the pros and cons of each, when to use them, and how to get the best results. We'll cover twist bits, brad point bits, forstner bits, spade bits, countersink bits, and self-centering bits. Now let's begin with twist bits. These feature flutes that spiral down the length of the shaft, terminating at a semi-blunt point at the end. That's where the cutting occurs, at the ends of the flutes. The rest of the flute is just designed to lift the chips up out of the hole. Efficient chip clearing is critical to keeping the bit cool so it doesn't dull prematurely. Small bits don't clear the chips as well as larger ones, and you may need to withdraw it from time to time to keep things cool and cutting well. Because twist bits are often used in metal as well as wood, there are several types available, including black oxide, chrome vanadium, titanium, and cobalt. All of these are suitable for woodworkers. Most are just high-speed steel at their core, but they have different coatings on them. Black oxide, for example, are heat-treated for greater durability, but they don't hold up as well on metals. Titanium-coated bits have a very high surface hardness, which holds up better when working with standard steel and iron. Cobalt bits can handle hardened steels. Now, why am I talking about boring through metal in a video about woodworking? Because every woodworker occasionally has to bore a hole in metal, and that's the primary use of twist drill bits in my shop, when I work with metal. I don't use twist bits often in wood because their points are not well suited for such a soft material. Unless they are very sharp, they don't seem to enter the hole cleanly. And larger bits can walk across the surface of the wood before they bite in, making it difficult to precisely place your hole, especially if you have to bore at an angle. If all you own, though, are twist bits, you can improve the results you get by boring a pilot hole with a small bit that won't walk much, then following up with your larger bit. You may also try to run the drill in reverse for a second or two to sort of burnish and sever the surface fibers before the aggressive cutters tear into them. But for woodworking, I much prefer a brad point bit. These feature tips that have points and spurs. The points help you precisely position the bit on your workpiece. They dig in and prevent walking as you begin the cut. The spurs are there to sever the surface fibers more cleanly before the flutes can tear them. But brad point bits are not all created equal. Cheap bits are not well machined. The points may not be in the exact center of the bit, and the spurs may not be sharp or well formed, so they may still tear the wood fibers. As any woodworker knows, nothing can spoil a project quicker than tool tear out. It doesn't make sense to invest all that money in your wood and your finish, not to mention all your time and effort, only to have ugly tear out or imprecise hole placement because you wanted to save a few bucks on drill bits. Good quality brad point bits are a pleasure to use, but you must also use them properly. For example, Enter the cut slowly and let the spurs cut a little bit of those surface fibers at a time. And slow down as you feel the bit nearing the other side of the workpiece. Let those spurs sever the outer fibers at the bottom as well when they exit. The downside of brad point bits is they don't work well at angles because the point must be in contact with the wood before the spurs, especially with a handheld drill. They also struggle to enlarge existing holes whereas the tapered end of irregular twist bit is sort of self-centering in such a situation. While both twist bits and brad point bits are available in large sizes, most sets include nothing larger than half an inch. For larger holes, many people choose spade or paddle bits. These are inexpensive and they're readily available in sizes from a quarter inch up to about an inch and a half. They feature a large point to guide the bit and spurs on the corners to sever the fibers around the perimeter of the hole. The cutting is done along the flat portion between the spurs and the point. Cheaper versions are simply ground at a slight angle at those edges. Others have a more aggressive hook for faster cutting. In my shop, paddle bits or spade bits are used for holes where 
I don't want to gum up or spoil my good Forstner bits. I see them more as a construction tool than a woodworking tool. And as with any large bit, you have to take it easy and slow things down or they will heat up fast and dull. Paddle bits are also notorious for causing blowout on the exit side of the workpiece. You can avoid this by taking advantage of that long point, which will poke through the bottom side well before the hole is finished, leaving a little pilot hole so you can find the center and finish the hole from the opposite side. This will produce a cleaner cut with a spade bit, but when the quality of the cut really counts, I prefer to use a Forstner bit. We have an entire video about the different Forstner bit styles available and how they work, so rather than repeating it all here, I'll add a link to that video below, and here I'll just give you some highlights. Much like a spade bit, a Forstner bit features a point to begin your cut. The rim around the perimeter of the bit severs the fibers around the perimeter of the hole and guides the bit during the cut, while a pair of cutters in between remove the bulk of the wood. Forstner bits are prized for their clean cuts and the flat bottoms they leave in holes. They can also be used in a drill press to bore overlapping holes for removing waste in a mortise, and some work well at angles as long as that angle isn't too steep. Again, quality matters. Very cheap Forstner bits will cut poorly when they're new, and they'll only get worse because they are poorly milled and they heat up quickly. Heat is the enemy of any bit. Because a Forstner bit does not have chip clearing flutes like a twist bit, you must periodically lift it from the hole to allow those chips to clear. You must also adjust your speed to match the size of the bit. Running a large Forstner bit too quickly will dull it even quicker. Now that covers the bits you will use most often in a woodworking shop. Let's look at a couple of specialty bits. If you work with screws, as most of us do, you should have a couple of good quality countersink bits. These are used to drill pilot holes, and as such, the bit must be as large or slightly larger than the shaft of your screw. So it pays to have more than one size if you plan on using more than one type of screw. The bit itself fits into a cutter that creates a countersink for the head of the screw to sit flush with the surface of your workpiece. Quality matters here as well. If the countersink cutter is not well made and sharp, it will tear the fibers of the wood and look terrible. Here's another type of bit I like to have on hand. It's designed with a spring-loaded retractable sleeve which is tapered on the end. This fits over the hole in a hinge or a bracket and automatically centers the bit. This is important if you plan to drive in a screw with a tapered head because that pilot hole has to be centered or the screw will force the hinge out of position. The catch is you must hold the bit perpendicular to the surface of the wood. If you bore it even a slight angle, the hole won't be centered. It pays to have a couple different sizes of these bits as well. Well, that's it. Those are the six bits that most woodworkers will encounter in a modern shop, along with tips on how to use them. If you wish to know the specific bits I use, check out the links below this video. And don't forget that tutorial about Forstner bits. You'll be surprised how much you didn't know about them. See you next time. For the last several years, I've been replacing my cheap drill and Forstner bits with quality bits from Fish Tools. They're a family-run company that still forges their bits the old-fashioned way. Try replacing your most used bits with Fish Bits using the links in the notes below this video, and you'll see why I love them so much. Wait, don't go yet. If you're new here, please subscribe, and remember to ring the bell. I would really appreciate that. Give us a thumbs up, or better yet, leave us a comment. I always read them. And be sure to check out the latest issue of Stumpy Nubs Woodworking Journal. It's always packed with tips, tricks, and tutorials designed to make you a better woodworker.